Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series on how we can make a TK Enter GUI with Python to interface with our Arduino. In this video, we're going to add an entry box. This entry box will allow the user to specify how many times they'd like the LED to blink on the Arduino. And as you can see, the user can update this value based upon what they'd like. And once they hit the turn on or the blink checkbox, the value will automatically be updated. So this gives another dimension to the user and then allows you the freedom to specify what specifically you'd like to update as opposed to a drop down menu where the values are fixed. Let's first take a look at this block diagram to see how this code will work. First we see at the left side the Python gets the user data and does the serial write. So we have here two variables beneath that block. Delay, which is the delay time which we use user.get and then we have the number of blinks which is the new variable which will be the number of times that the LED will blink and you'll see we'll create a widget called an entry box so I called the variable entry blink and we use the get method just like how we got the user delay now we only want to send one value or in my opinion for this code it's the best way to do it so what we want to do is send one string and we're going to use a delimiter, which is the dash, which is in the center, to specify the delay and the blinks in one string. But the delimiter will tell us when we need to split those values. So ultimately, what we'll do is transmit one string from Python and then decode it on the Arduino side using the delimiter of the dash. Now that Python has collected the user data and transmitted the string, the Arduino's job is to interpret this string and then format it. So here's a simplified look. Once the Arduino gets the command to go into blink mode and get this data, it calls get user data. And this is going to ultimately update the user data Python TK array. And that contains the delay and the blink count. Here's a more detailed look. So first we need to read the string so we're going to use serial dot read string that allows us to read to the end of line character these next lines of code are the initial beginnings of how we split the two values that were sent over in the one string from Python the key is to find two values first is where in this string is the delimiter located once we know where the delimiter is located to find the user delay we remove all the characters to the right of it. And then to find the number of blinks, we remove all the characters to the left of it. So you can see, once we find that delimiter, the left side will be one value, and to the right of it will be the other. Now we can move on to the actual formatting of these values. First, we have the delay string. So we first make a copy of the data that was transmitted from Python which includes the delimiter in both values. So what we need to do is remove all the values, including the delimiter, and then all the characters to the right of it. We first make a copy of that original value. The reason we do that is the next line of code down from the delay string assignment uses the dot remove method. This method does not return a copy. It does the updates in place. If we didn't have the copy and we removed the characters, then that data would be lost. So we simply just make a copy right before we use that method. And here's a snippet of the remove method documentation from the Arduino website. You can see in this case, for the delay string, we provide it just the index of the delimiter. So it removes that character and everything to the right of it. It's the same concept for the blink count string, except we're removing the delimiter and all the characters to the left of it. In the remove method, we have two parameters in this case. We need to tell it where to start removing and then tell it how many characters to remove. And this is based upon the delimiter. If we know the delimiter position, then we know how many characters we know that we need to remove because the delimiter is in the center of these two values. The index starts at zero and the count begins counting at 1. So we just need to offset the delimiter position by 1 and that gives us the total characters that we need to remove. Finally we need to convert these strings we cut out of the original data 
into integers and store them into an organized location. As opposed to managing many individual variables, we're going to use a single array that will contain all the user data. We can also use this for future development as well. And we'll just need to know where the position is in that index and how that correlates to what values we're retrieving or updating. Now that we know the get user function updates the user data pi tk array, we simply need to assign these variables and then make sure the for loop gets updated so that the user can have more control of this loop. So we assign delay time to user pi data at the zero index. And we assign num links to user data pi tk at the first index because we know the positions of those. And the for loop was updated to contain these variables. Note the middle parameter of the for loop i less than num blinks. So this will set the number of blinks. And it's that position in the user data pi tk array which we assign num blinks. Let's take a look at the Arduino code. There are a couple more details we should review. First, let's take a look at line three. This is where we define the user data pi tk array. It should be noted that this is a global variable. So it's not specific to a function. And this allows us to access that throughout our code. And that ties into line 10. Note that it's a void get user data function. So this function isn't returning the array. It's simply updating the values of the global variable, which is an array of integers, which is user data pi tk. In that function, we have the string declarations, which we'll be using to get the user data update string from Python the delay string, blink count string, and the find delimiter. Also, you can see the integer initialization. And we see we still have the two second delay. And then the rest of the code is what we reviewed in the block diagram. We read the single string from Python. We determine the delimiter, which is the dash mark. And we split the value into the delay string and then the blink count string. Those ultimately get converted into integers and then saved into the user data pi tk array. Now let's look at the main loop of this Arduino code. So we check for serial available, which would be the command from Python. And in lines 40 and 41, we create our variables that will be updated in the delay loop. We got int delay time and int num blinks. Then user input checks for what the user or Python code will be sending over, whether we want to blink or not, turn the LED on or off, or put into blink mode. So if the user puts it into blink mode, then we call the get user data, which was the function we outlined previously. Now that we call get user data, the values in user data pi tk have been updated, and we assign those to the variables in the for loop. Now let's take a look at the changes in the Python code. Let's focus on our function declaration of blink LED. We can see here we added the code that we're going to use to write the string to the Arduino to tell it the delay and then number of blinks. So once blink is enabled, we write the lowercase b, we do the one second delay, then we retrieve delay, which is user delay.get, which we've seen previously in other lessons. And then the new value is the num blinks, and that's assigned to entry blink dot get. This method get retrieves the value from the entry box, which is a new widget we're adding. Then we assign the string that we're going to provide to the Arduino to data to send. And that equals delay, and that's concatenated with the dash, which is going to be our delimiter, and then is also concatenated with num blinks. Then the last line here in line 26 is seer.write data to send dot encode. And this encode takes care of the string formatting so that the Arduino can interpret and understand what we're writing to it. So now we'll go ahead and look at the widget creation for the entry box. We can see here in lines 50 through 54, that's where we're creating and placing this widget. So to create the entry box, we do entry and then we use the two parameters. We have root and then the width. So the width controls the 
as it states the width of the entry box, and three is for three characters. Then in line 51, we do entry blank dot insert. And what the insert method allows us to do is have a default value in the entry box. So once the TK enter window pops up, the character five will be in the entry box. So that five will be used as the default value. This insert method has two parameters. The first is the location of where you're placing that default value. So in our case, we want to insert it into the entry box at the first position or the zero index. In 52, we create the entry blink label. And this is simply just a TK enter label. And that takes those two parameters, which is the window to which it will be placed, and then the text. So num blinks is going to be the text that identifies to the user where they need to add that value in. Then the last two lines of code we're going to add is 53 and 54. And these use grid to place the label in the entry box itself. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learn more about how you can customize your TK Enter GUI by adding an entry box. Stay tuned for more content and let me know what you think in the comment section.